2010, the Supreme Court passed the Citizens United right. um, case, giving corporations and unions, uh, you know, allowing them to participate in politics. Make independent expenditures. Make independent expenditures. Since then, the left liberals have been on a huge counteroffensive against corporations. Right. And now the proxy season's coming up, and it looks like we're going to see another arm of that offensive. When I looked into this, uh, I didn't really fully understand the extent and the breadth of what the left was doing. But the more you look, you, you, you see it's very, very broad. And it's been going on even further back than Citizens United, back to the middle part of the last decade, where there's an effort to try to get corporations to have to disclose all of the contributions they make to political operations, not just direct contributions to candidates, but which they have to do anyway under the campaign finance laws, but what do they give to trade associations? How much do they give to the Chamber of Commerce? How much do they give to any kind of independent expenditure camp? How much do they spend on lobbying? Yeah. And in some cases, even how much their executives give. Where do the PACs spend money? It's a broad-based effort, and the, the, the danger of it is, is that it gets, once the, disclosure sounds great, right? Sure, we all like absolutely. Disclosure. But they then use that to harass and intimidate, and the ultimate goal here is shut down all corporate spending on politics. Yeah, well, they refer to it as uh, meddling in politics, or even interfering in quote unquote our democracy. Right, that's right. If you because if corporations give, it's meddling in democracy. If unions give, it's democratic participation. Yeah, the unions were also uh, protected by Citizens United as well. That's right. But these groups are not attacking union participation in politics. No, no that's right. And I mean it, it, it's a really systematic campaign. Started about eight, nine years ago, George Soros's Open Society Institute feeding money into a group called the Center for Political Accountability, which is kind of a the think tank for this operation, but it's spread very wide now. You've got these, I call them ideological bucket shops, but they're basically yeah. small investment operations. They buy a few shares, a couple of thousand bucks in a company, and then they put ideological proxy resolutions on the proxy ballot. And they mm -hmm. say, you know what? Um, we'll pull that if you start to disclose what you give. Otherwise, boy, you know, we might have to vote against your directors. Yeah. And companies don't like that controversy. They don't like to have their directors oppose. And even more interesting is the, the progress these groups and this movement has made in getting CalPERS, CalSTRS, the big giant public pension funds, which right. have a, you know, they own a lot of corporate America. And the, to get to vote to say, you must now, corporations, disclose your political contributions, your political activities, and this institutional shareholder services, which advises a lot of mutual funds yeah. and other public pension and public pension funds on where they should vote. They've got them to do the same thing. So this is a big movement. I think I think corporate directors don't understand what they're up against. Well, as a practical matter, how do you have any sense of how many big corporations are actually taking advantage of Citizens United to participate in politics, to do political spending. I mean, some of the biggest, we're well aware, they would just as soon not be on any side of these That's issues. Right. But exactly it's, the, right. it's the lower level companies often who are going to be most impacted by regulations that feel that they have a stake. I think that's right, and most of these big companies don't like to give directly. Yeah. You know, they give. They have a political action committee. Most of them that their senior officers and executives contribute to, and that will make a donation to candidates around the country. But they don't like to give to directly to too many candidates as a corporation out of tre their treasury fund. They don't like to do that. On the other hand, what they do do is they participate as part of associations. They give money to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, to the National Association of Manufacturers, to the Financial Roundtable, if you happen to be a financial services company, to the National Federation of Independent Business, right? And that's how they pool their resources to be able to influence politics. And it's been fascinating to me to see that that's one of the main targets of these groups. They want to shut off that funding to trade groups yeah. because they know if the Chamber of Commerce isn't in there pitching, on business priorities, that sees the field to unions, it seals the field to environmental groups, public interest so-called groups, the Nader umbrella organizations, or what used to be the Nader umbrella organizations, and then the rich billionaires 
like George Soros and Peter Lewis. Who would well, have thought proxies could be so interesting? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be watching. We'll be All watching. Right. Thanks, Thanks much, Paul.